lovely learners, and welcome to Teachable Thursday. We're going to do something a little bit different this week for Teachable Thursday. This week, um, I always look at the holidays that are coming up. What are the special days on the calendar that we can learn about? And this week was Indigenous Peoples Day. And I know that's a really big word, but Indigenous people are the people that were originally in, um, in on the land. And so in Thailand, we don't have to think about that so much, but in Canada, um, I know in Australia, in lots of places, we have big indigenous communities. And these are people that um, were not treated very fairly a lot of the time. And so this is a book from a Canadian author about um, Indigenous people in Canada. Now, it's an unconventional Teachable Thursday because this book is fiction. It's a picture book, but it is a book about something real um, based on the experiences of the author's um, family members, grandparents. And so because it was inspired by nonfiction, we're going to use it for our Teachable Thursday today because it's all really grounded in truth um, and in history. So let's check that out together and see what we can learn from this gorgeous picture book. When We Were Alone by David A. Robertson and Julie Flett. Today I helped my Kokum in her flower garden. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. Nokum, why do you wear so many colors? I asked. Nokum said, well, no see some? When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I wore many different colors. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All the children were dressed the same, and our clothes weren't colorful at all. We all mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that? I asked. They didn't like that, they wore, that we wore such beautiful colors, Nokum said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. But sometimes in the fall, when we were alone, and the leaves had turned to their warm autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground, we would pile the leaves over the clothes they had given us, and we would be colorful again. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always wear the most beautiful colors. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate, and they reached all the way to the ground. When my Kokum turned to fix the latch, I saw that her braid hung almost as low as the vines. It was like she had a tail. Nokum, why do you wear your hair so long? I asked. Nokum said, well, no see some? When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It made us feel strong and proud. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they cut off all of our hair. Our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. Why did you have to wear your hair like that? I asked. They didn't like that we were proud, Nokum said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. But sometimes in the spring when we were alone and the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick the blades from the ground. We would braid them into the short hair that they had given us and we would have long hair again. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always wear my hair very long. After my Kokum had fixed the latch, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle-dressed dancer. She fed the bird and whispered, Na pinyasis misiko, ta misi ketien ta maskin and her words sounded just like a poem. Nokum, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Nokum said, well, no see some. When I was your age at home in my community, my friends and I always spoke our language, but at the school I went to far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. All the children used their strange words and we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in their language? I asked. They didn't want us, they didn't like that we spoke our language, Nokum said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. 
But sometimes in the summer when we were alone and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say so that we wouldn't forget them. And this made us happy. Now, Nolcom said, I always speak my language. After our gardening work was done, I sat with my Kolkum in the backyard. Her brother came over and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate bannock. The tea was hot and sweet and the bannock was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My Kolkum and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Nolcom, why do you and Nokomis always spend so much time together? I asked. Nokum said, well, Nosisim, when we were your age, at home in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together, and shared everything. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nokomis separated? I asked. They didn't like when we were with family, Nokom said, because when we were together, we thought too much of our home. But sometimes in the winter, when we were alone, and we were sure that nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mitts, and in the crisp, cold air, we would hold hands so we could be with each other. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, as she reached over and held my uncle's hand and mine, I am always with my family. Thanks for listening to our story today. I know, like I said, it's a bit of an unconventional Teachable Thursday because this book is fiction, but it's based on things that really happened. In Canada, we called them residential schools, where Indigenous people were taken away from their families um, and moved into schools where they weren't allowed to be themselves, to speak their languages or wear their clothes, um, sing their songs, or even see their family. And it's a part in history that's really important to think about to make sure that it doesn't happen again. I know it's been a lot of conversation in Canada recently about residential schools and because it was Indigenous Peoples Day this week, I think it's just an important topic for us to be thinking about and something we can always learn more about. Thanks for joining us today friends and we will see you tomorrow for a first chapter Friday. Bye!